We are live. I'm Jay. That's Brad. I don't have a PhD. He does. We're going to talk about nutrition. Yeah, but you've got sweet hair. I've got sweet hair. And I have a goldfish hat today. Yeah. My grandma told me that I have to cut my hair, and I said, no, I'm going to let no, it go. No, it looks so good. Yeah, I said, I'm going to let it go. Wow, it is out of control today. I'm going to let it go. I said, no, I'm going to let it go, like, you know, shoulder length, just to see what she said. It's like, the barbers are open. Go get a haircut. Uh, well, we'll see how it goes. I do need to get the back. It's kind of feathering out. It's a cross between like hockey hair and Fabio flowing locks. I don't know where I'm at yet. It's it's very, very beautiful. Yeah, well, I'm very beautiful, so it makes sense. How are you today? Oh, I'm ready for Friday. Hang in there. Yeah, yeah. I keep thinking it's Saturday, so I'm, I'm, I'm way ready for Friday. Oh, it's not Saturday? No, 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 it's not. I thought it was. Oh, so I should have been working this morning is what you're saying. No. Oh, okay. You don't have to do anymore. YOLO. Just, is, I'm, not, I'm not. Is that how this works now? Yeah. Oh, I'm very excited about it. Somebody asked someone to put in a man bun, Lisa. No, it will never be in a man bun. Man bun now. Yeah. Immediately. What if it's like a top knot? I can just get it like in that little tiny bit. <laughs> I think you should cut all this and just grow this. Yeah, I'm a, I could probably do it uh, in like a, a full hawk, or I, I, if I get it tall enough to do Liberty Spikes, that would be pretty sweet. That would be pretty sweet. That's boom, boom, boom. That would be pretty awesome. I, I would like it so that I can braid the top of my 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 head, top of the hair up here, with the bottom of my beard. So I have to get both of them equal length to meet right here. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. I'd be in for that. Yeah. Well, um, Jay, what the heck is this show? Um, this is called the show that Jay couldn't figure out topics for because I thought it was Saturday, so I had to come up with them last minute, and I couldn't find the notebook where I have all the show ideas. So today we are going to talk about hydration. And the first thing I actually had typed in, when I typed in hydration, I had a mistype, and my autocorrect put in hyperhidrosis. So we could talk about excessive sweating, which I'm pretty sure that I have. Do your hands, um, do your palms sweat? My palms are actually wet right now. Yeah. I have a, a colleague of mine who he has, he like legit has been diagnosed with hyperhidrosis and he doesn't yeah. shake people's hands. He just fist bumps. I can, I, oh, I get that. My hands are always like slightly moist. Um, Damp. Yeah. Like I, yeah, it's, it, it's bad, but I haven't been to a doctor in like 10, 15 years. Well, outside, if you drop, if outside of like an urgent aid. <sighs> Well, I hope you don't drop dead. Um, I have insurance now, so. Well, what happens to the macros, Inc. if you die? Uh, you have a list with all the passwords, and Lisa knows to send you my laptop, so. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the backup plan. <laughs> that's the backup plan. <laughs> and the password file list that you have access to has the password to my password. It has the password to my laptop on it, so you can get everything. And I then have to email all of our clients and say, I'm so sorry for the next six weeks as I try to figure this out. Yeah. I, it, it, but see, here's the beauty of it. I won't care. Ah, <laughs> you're so funny. All right. Well, uh, yeah, same thing. Palms and feet always, always, always moist. Yep. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. No one cares though. I don't care. It doesn't bug me. Socks. Bug your yep. feet. So first thing we're going to talk about today, Jay is not allowed to die. I'm, 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 I'm well behind this statement. Actually, right. <laughs> this is a statement I like. Um, so, hydration. <clears throat> hydration. Let's put this up on the screen so people know what we're talking about so they don't think it's hyperhidrosis. And we're talking about hydration. Boom. So, hydration. So, Brad. Yes. I want you, can you give me an exact number for how much flu, how, how much water I should drink per day right now? Can you? Yes. Oh, how much? However much you feel like you need. Oh, that's not a number, though. Um, so, the... Adequate intake numbers mm -hmm. that we've kind of been given are roughly 2.7 to 3.7 liters per day. Uh, women are on the lower end, men are on the higher end. That's kind of the rough guidelines. Now, are there a lot of it depends <laughs> incorporated? Oh, yeah. Lots of it depends. Plenty, right? So let's start with the with the not with the ones that we we quote unquote can't control, and that would be like environment. So if I yeah. am in somewhere like Chicago, it is so humid out right now. I have changed my shirt twice today. 
Um, so if I walk outside, it's 90 out with like 85% humidity. I walk outside. Um, am I going, and it's humid, I'm working in my yard. Am I going to need more or less water than on in the same temperature, 90 degree day, but with very low humidity? You know, I'm going to take a stab at this. First, I'll say I don't know 100% because I've strangely not done a lot of reading in that area. But my guess would be you would need more. You will need more, yeah. Yes. Correct. Because your sweating is not as efficient. So you're going to have more water going to the surface to have more evaporative cooling per unit of yes heat that you need to dissipate correct god see you can reason things from first principle yeah and i only know these answers i only know hydration stuff from being paramedic that's the only reason i know like hydration really well um so then if i am hydrate if i'm let's say i'm hydrate what what's the the best way i mean you know if, if i'm in a desert climate am i going to have different hydration needs from doing the same amount of yard work as i will in somewhere like northern canada yes yeah Right. Yeah. I mean, it just makes sense. So, so there are, if, if I'm training in, if, if I'm an endurance athlete training in the desert, I think we had a client, we had a triathlete who, who had trained outside. He, he traveled for a triathlon down to Texas. I think it was Texas. It, it maybe somewhere. No, he trained. I can't remember. It wasn't Texas. Wherever he went to, it was a lot warmer, a lot more humid than he had been training in. And uh, he finished the triathlon, but then got hospitalized for three days afterwards. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, so, and he was hydrating, he was hydrating according to his normal training schedule, but, and we did not provide his, his training with him. And we actually didn't know about the, where the, where the meat was, so we didn't, weren't able to say, Hey, take care. But he's actually, he's still with us. So he's, he did pretty, he's done recovering. He texted me that morning. He was not my client, but he texted me that morning and said, Hey, just so you know, I got my best time ever. I'm in the hospital for three days, but that's, but I've done that before. So, you know, oh my God. Like, okay. Like this sport doesn't seem very, that's a very expensive marathon. Yeah. Three days um, in the hospital is probably at least like 30 grand. Yeah. But I think, I mean, it was like un, unseasonable weather there. I think he said like a third of the triathletes were in the hospital for it and, and only like an eighth of them finished or something. Yeah. It was, it was ridiculous. It would, it was like looking at the numbers for the temp for the weather, it should have been canceled. Yeah. Um, what are, if I, what is the the best indicator for me to know that I'm hydrated? Like if I'm like, obviously if I'm dehydrated, if my skin is tenting, you can pull it up. I'm not hydrated enough. Um, if I have pitting edema, I'm probably a little too hydrated, <laughs> but what is like a, a daily indicator for the average person to know that they're, they're doing a good job? Um, thirst is relatively decent for most people of kind of like standard everyday hydration. Um, and then the other one is uh, body weight. Okay. How about, how about urine color? Um, you can go by urine color. Um, the only problem with that is a lot of times like vitamin or mineral supplementation mm -hmm. can change urine color. So if you really want to go by urine, going by specific gravity is much more accurate. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, I'm a big, I don't, you know, especially the, uh, your, your first pee in the morning is typically not the best one to go by, but throughout the day, how many, how many times a day, like should the average person urinate then to, if you're, if you're at proper hydration levels, dude, I don't even know it's about five, five, okay. Uh, approximately it changes per person, but it is about five. And I think I'm like five times that. Yeah. So my, I, I pee every like 20 minutes, but that's cause I drink a lot of fluid. Yeah. Uh, and then urine color, if you are going by urine color, again, taking into the, like Brad said, taking into the uh, account, the vitamins and minerals, you don't want clear urine. Uh, you are overhyped at that point. And if you are bright yellow or dark, you're in trouble calling the ambulance. If you're bright yellow, you need to take in some fluid. Oh, um, speaking of that. Yeah. This is on topic, but off topic. So <laughs> yesterday I went to make eggs. And I cracked the eggs and the egg whites were like neon green. No, thanks. So I looked into it and it said it could be either like too much riboflavin in the diet of the chicken or mm. it could be pseudomonas bacteria. And I was like, eh, I'm not risking that. I don't think I'll take the chance. No, pseudomonas infection would be a horror. Did you throw out the whole container? Gone. Yeah, I would have not taken a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Did it smell bad? 
Mm, I can't really smell anything ever. I'm always it's too oh, stuffy to smell stuffy, things. Yeah. I can I, always smell like coffee. No. It's very strong. <laughs> the uh, back to hydration. <laughs> if what is for for daily average people, you know, I, I work out a couple, you know, forty five minutes a day. I'm doing you know basic cardio, nothing crazy. I'm not out in extreme temperatures or climates. What counts for hydration? Is it water only, or is it any anything? Um, did you say did urine color? No, no, no. <laughs> not even. If what counts for hydrating? Like, is the average person who's not in like extreme temperatures or doing oh, okay. you know, the average person throughout a day? What counts towards my hydration status? Is it just water, or is it other things count as well? Um, anything. Anything that has fluid, right? So it can be liquids like coffee, water, pop, um, soda, or um, like fruits, vegetables have water content in them, any of those things. Okay. How about alcohols? Alcohol does. Um, beer and things like that definitely count. But what if I like do two shots of whiskey? Does that count as like two ounces of water or does that, um, does that dehydrate me faster? I would say that's probably a net negative. Okay. Hey, you muted. I couldn't hear you. Yeah, sorry. I had to mute. My dog was barking. Um, no. So if you're having just straight alcohol, like forty percent alcohol or above, it's probably going to be more dehydrating than hydrating. Yeah, <clears throat> great. And then the last question is: is is <clears throat> for an athlete like and and you know and and we could go with this for somebody who's running like 20 minutes on a treadmill but we'll go with somebody who's running three five ten miles um somebody who's out playing a sport in the heat somebody who's out doing yard work what is 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 it just water should that should you be taking that or is there something better for your system to be taking to replenish something you're losing yeah i mean generally speaking having something with electrolytes and probably some sort of carbohydrate is far better at hydrating you um mm -hmm just in terms of water absorption in the stomach. Mm -hmm. And the other piece is as you drink water, like let's say you drink a lot of water, you're basically reducing the concentration of your current electrolytes, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times if you just drink water, you become hyponatremic or you have, don't have enough sodium and or hypokalemic and you don't have enough potassium and you can actually cause cardiovascular problems, like acute arrhythmias. You can have pretty substantial problems if you have too much water um, and not enough electrolytes. So you kind of want to replace, you want you want to keep the concentrations of your electrolytes the same as your hydrate. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, that's why, I mean, I, I prefer, as soon as I, if I know I'm doing, you know, outside just walking around, I'm going for a walk around the block or something, I'm even at the gym working out, I, I stick with, you know, water or flavored something. But yeah, if I'm, if I know I'm doing yard work or I'm going hiking today or I'm going to be, even camping where you're, you're outside doing more work, then I switch over to, 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 to Gatorade or something where I can get more, more electrolytes. All right. We, yeah. got, we got some questions here. Uh, Pinot Grigio is my favorite color of, is my color of choice, but not an hour after I take my vitamins. That's the color. I think she's talking about color for your energy. Yeah. Through. Light straw, golden straw. Yeah, and Pinot Grigio is the only wine I know that's like, I don't know anything about wine, but I know that one is not red. So, Facts. Uh, Heather Cole said, I have taken electrolyte min mineral packs when hiking in Utah and after really hot and sweaty workouts in Missouri summers. Are those only beneficial if you take them after to replenish minerals or can you take it before an event to prevent the electrolyte mineral loss? Um, I would say taking them before and during is more, more. beneficial than taking them after. Yep. Um, and I say that because if you you can get to a point where it's too late, right? Like your rate of replenishment um, is not enough to solve the problems. Um, there's actually, I want to see if I can find it. There's a really good blog of Alex Vieta, um, Grand Canyon. Yeah. So did you ever read that article that he wrote? Um, maybe. I, I don't know. I know who you're yeah. talking about. I don't remember the, the specific article, but I've read a lot of Alex's stuff. Yeah, so pardon the language in it. Um, Jay, I'll put this in our private chat. But basically, it's a story of, if you know Alex, he's like one of the five people on the planet who's just not human. 
Um, like he deadlifts like 600 pounds and runs like a four minute mile for 50 hours, like that kind of person. Um, but he does a lot of trail running and one day he went and he, like, he knows quite a bit about performance nutrition from a endurance perspective. Um, and he went out grand Canyon trail run, um, and did not bring his sodium tablets and, uh, kind of tells the story of what can happen if you don't have proper hydration. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I will tell you. Just, I mean, I've been dehydrated. I've been so dehydrated. I've had to get an IV before when, like, working at at fires and stuff. Um, but that is, yeah, you you should definitely be preparing for the loss versus trying to recover from the loss because it's way harder to recover from a loss than it is. You know, you you don't the and <clears throat> the marathon runners who properly fueled and hydrated before don't end up in the hospital. It's the ones who try to recover that, that don't, didn't that end up in the hospital for days trying to recover what they lost. So if you can manage it beforehand, you're way better. Um, it is, it is one of those things though, where you do not want to overload um, because becoming hypernutremic is not a fun experience um, or hyperkalemic uh, would not be a, a okay. Yeah, I mean, you could you could die from them if you went too much. Um, yeah. But so let's see, where else do we got? Does uh, Terry said hi to you? At all hi. It was hi to you. Um, this Facebook user wants to know if coffee counts. They swear they read it dehydrated you. So coffee does count, and it definitely. There's been plenty of studies that show it does not dehydrate you. It it is a diuretic, but like not correct. If I'm correct me if I'm wrong, it is a diuretic, but not to any significant extent. Correct. So it's interesting in that if you actually just even, even give people like anhydrous caffeine, mm -hmm. it appears that over like a 24 hour period, even that doesn't have dehydrating effects, if I recall correctly. But since like, and I, I and it's, not, I'm going to make the, I'm going to say this funny. So it's not awkward, but it is a true statement. Like when I have my coffee in the morning, I have to run into the bathroom. Like, I mean, am, am I, I'm obviously fluid is obviously it, it's obviously in bowel fluid. so Would yes i think hydrate I, you a little bit more i think that there are i mean coffee itself the non-caffeinated pieces of it can make you have to use the bathroom um yeah. the caffeinated piece does change sympathetic nervous system activity and can mm -hmm. probably cause you know some level of urination and or bowel movements um but the net effect is, you, is you have to remember like how much you pee out Right. Doesn't really have anything to do with your hydration status, right? Right. Yeah. So you may be making smaller amounts of highly concentrated urine and you're actually, you know, yeah. Adding to your net hydration. Okay. Uh, this Facebook user wants to know if my goal is to is to lose fat. So in a deficit, I will be lifting weights. Will lift. So in a deficit, will lifting weights be beneficial at all? Since I can't build muscle, I originally assumed weightlifting would help maintain muscle mass, but now I'm questioning if I should just stick to cardio. So when you are losing weight, especially if you have a substantial amount of weight to lose, the single best thing you can do for yourself is lift weights. Mm -hmm. It will spare most of your lean muscle tissue losses. So if you're losing weight, even if it's 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 pounds, and you get adequate protein and you engage in resistance training, you will drastically reduce the amount of lean muscle tissue that you lose. Mm -hmm. Perfect. We have Sheila. How common is hyponutremia or hypokalemia? What's it? Kalemia, uh, so potassium. You don't really hear about it as much as dehydration, it seems like. Um, yeah, that's because... They Generally do. speaking, people default to not drinking enough water versus drinking too much water. Mm -hmm. um, so like wa acute water toxicity. So you can actually die from drinking too much water. Um, and the reason you do that is because you become hyponatremic or hypokalemic. Yeah. Remember that woman who died from, um, because you're diluting. So you're, you're having so much water, it dilutes the sodium, the salt content, the potassium content in your bloodstream to where you can't catch up. So you have to hyperdose these people and they'll give them a, a uh, isotonic. Oh man, it's been a long time. I think they give them an isotonic crystalloid uh, solution. Like in a hospital, it's 0.9. Uh, so they would actually go higher than that to try and replenish the sodium that you're getting. Um, yep. But you're, 
do, do you remember, Brad, uh, uh, when Nintendo Wii came out, there was a radio station had a contest to see who could go, who could drink, go the longest without peeing, and a, a woman actually died of hyponatremia from it? That does not surprise me. To, to win a Nintendo Wii, I completely remember that. She drank like five gallons of water and didn't pee for a couple hours, a couple days. Oh, it hurt. Yeah, I couldn't imagine that. And then I think when she finally did, like they were like, no, like she was past the point of no return. And you have to be careful with hyponatremia, hypokalemia. My dog just came upstairs. She's not supposed to be up here. Lay down, please. Um, hypokalemia, hyponatremia, um, and hyper and hypo. You can die from them. Um, yeah. yeah. Sodium, potassium imbalance. Uh, that's how your your heart works. Sodium goes in, potassium goes out of your cells, um, and you can cause a heart attack from it. So that that their sodium potassium pump. Yeah, the the for some reason that was like the hardest thing in paramedic school, and it was like the one thing that made sense. I was like, no, in and out. It's I don't get it. It's easy. When <laughs> I used to when I used to teach people, I told them to call it the knock pump. The knock pump. Like remember the knock list from yeah. Mission Impossible? I yeah. would call it the super yeah. secret knock pump. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, is there a rule of thumb for the amount of hydration I should do, I should do prior to an eight mile run and during the run? I would say base it more on time than distance. So if that eight hour run takes you an hour and a half, um, consider how much you're going to be using. And there's there are some good guides for that. Yeah, um, and I, I have one. Um, Five hundred mill. Hold on, I'm looking through my notes. Five hundred milliliters of fluid two hours before training. Uh, where is it? Kidneys can process up to six hundred to a thousand milliliters an hour. Uh, good way to hydration. Output of hundred milliliters per hour equates to a hydrated person. With thirst is felt, you're dehydrated by two percent. I know I have a whole thing. I will look. Uh, <laughs> I might not be able to find it. I used to have a whole formula. Yeah, I can't find it. I used to have a whole spreadsheet that I could type in. It would tell your hydration for endurance athletes, but there are formulas for it. Um, we obviously don't know them off the top of my head, off the top of our head, but there are formulas to uh, calculate your hydration status based on your weight, your distance, and your uh, intensity. Speaking of hydration, yeah, aren't the kidneys the craziest organs? No, the brain is. I don't know what. Well, besides the brain, the kidney is the craziest organ. Well, maybe yours. My heart is my craziest organ. Brad. Dude, the heart is pretty basic. Yeah, I know. It's like a sheet of cardiomyocytes that just pump. You know what's really cool? If you grow a bunch of uh, atrial cells in a dish and you let the dish get full enough of cells, it will just start spontaneous contracting in the dish. Dish it like make its own AV node. It's very weird. Yeah, no, I've I've I've, I've seen that, and then yeah, the, the the I think the most interesting thing to me are, are cardiac valves because they have their own impulse system, and that to me is just like you can conduct electricity from like just these specialized cells conduct electricity, but they follow the same hypertrophy rules that skeletal muscle follows. It's but just, they you know what's really interesting is. They follow similar mechanisms, but the genes regulating them are very different. Are different, right? Yeah, they're completely different. Yeah, it's just so. Uh, it, uh, cardiac muscle interests me a lot, but I also taught cardiac stuff for ten years. So, it... you know what's very interesting? You, you'll appreciate this. So, when people become obese and insulin resistant, mm -hmm. your skeletal muscle starts decreasing fatty acid utilization and increases glucose utilization. Wait, say that one more time. So when you become obese and insulin resistant or just yeah. insulin resistant in general, mm -hmm. your skeletal muscle starts mm -hmm. decreasing fatty acid utilization. Okay. And starts increasing glucose oxidation. Yeah, I can see that. In your heart, it does the complete opposite. You actually start rapidly increasing fatty acid oxidation and de decreasing glucose utilization. Hmm. And that like that metabolic shift triggers what's known as the fetal gene program. So okay. when you are a fetus and a very young baby, um, the cardiac hypertrophy program and modeling is much different than when you're an adult. And right. So you actually, when you become obese and insulin resistant, that metabolic switch is part of what turns on that fetal gene program and why you become, you get kind of concentric hypertrophy in the heart. Hmm. Isn't that weird? That is weird. That's interesting. It's more what, crazy. And I've never been able to find an answer out for this. And I have asked cardiologists. I have asked 
uh, endocrinologist. I have at, at every every kind of physician. And every ologist, you know? Every ologist that I encountered when I was teaching. I don't think I've ever asked you because it never came up in our conversations. What are the glucose stores of the heart? You know, we know that, you know, you, you have a, approximate glucose store, you know, glucose storage in of skeletal muscle, we, we can calculate there's formulas and uh, approximations for that, but I've never been able to find one for cardiac muscle. Yeah, it's pretty small. It, um, yeah. I want to say it's, I'd have to remember, but it's in the order of like, it's less than a hundred grams by far. Yeah. I mean, I, is it, is it the same like pound per pound of skeletal muscle versus skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle pound for pound? They can hold the same. Um, no, no. Okay. I believe it's slightly different. And okay. I, I believe if anything, the relative glucose carrying capacity may be a little bit higher in the heart mm -hmm. than anywhere else okay. or than the skeletal muscle. I'll have to double check, but I think that's the case because kind of at rest, the heart uses a little more, um, glucose than the skeletal muscle does at rest and the fact that the heart never rests is part right, of it. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, so I, I think the relative sword is a little bit higher. Well, thank you everybody for coming to a cardiac talk. Cause I will, I have a couple more things I can talk about. The, the only reason I know this is because one of the lab mates in my graduate program, that's what they did. They did, they did, um, transcription factor regulation of the fetal gene program. Oh, I don't yeah. know what that means, but sounds interesting. That's, I don't even know what it means, and I sat next to it for two years. Let's get on our next topic. Before we do that, Jay, if you wanted somebody to help you understand all this stuff in a much no. faster route. No, I wouldn't do don't? it. I wouldn't do it. Okay. But let's just say, for argument's sake, you were very open-minded and really wanted to learn some cool stuff and have somebody guide you through the forest – to reach the promised land on the other side, where would you go? I would probably head to macrosync.net. Um, we have a, there's a two week free coaching trial. Well, if I was going for free information, I definitely had to NutriWiki.org. Um, sign up for the two, for the email course, yes. get not notifications on the upcoming real course that's coming out. Uh, and then for coaching, for a guided approach to how to navigate all these waters questions on hydration am i being hydrated enough am i at peak performance for training um am i just <clears throat> healthy i want to lose weight uh definitely head over to macrosync.net sign up for that two-week free trial did you also know this about nutriwiki if you go to the search bar uh -huh. and i think i think it works in most browsers but definitely google chrome and you type in nutriwiki.org and you press the tab button it will actually search the NutriWiki for you. You don't even have to go to NutriWiki.org and then search. It'll pull up like a search in the thing. What? I'm, I, ain't, I ain't lying. I just pressed tab and it didn't do anything. What? Go to, go to Chrome. Go to NutriWiki.org yeah. and then hit tab. And then does it say search NutriWiki.org? It just took me to NutriWiki.org. Did you hit tab though? It just says skip the no, this is I don't understand what you're saying. Oh I'll send you a picture. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm not doing this correctly. I'm very sad. Well, my very exciting announcement is no longer very exciting. <laughs> well, let's get to beach muscles, Brad. So what are the beach muscles? Are those the all show no go muscles? Everything but legs, right? Uh and what about booty? Um what about back? The, well yeah, everything but legs. Okay, so everything well, everything but would calf muscles be considered beach muscles? They should be, but it just depends who you are. So we're talking, we're talking arms is what we're talking about, and guns out, guns out. and chest, and no, no, people don't lift back anymore. It's not a thing. They gave oh, up. Back day is my favorite day. Not anymore. So, what is? Can't, how let's so we're just we'll just talk arms we'll talk beach muscles and arms and how many days now obviously we have two major two muscle groups in our arm obviously we have triceps and biceps so if i am working can i work them 
both on the same day? Should I work them on alternating days or should I work them? Uh, never work them at all. You can do whatever you want. What but if you want do? them to grow, you have to work them. Right. Um, you can do them all the same day. You can have like a dedicated arm day. Mm -hmm. It really just matters. Are you getting adequate growth volume, mm -hmm. uh, growth stimulus over like, a, let's just say a week. Mm -hmm. And then you have enough recovery period between them to train hard again. So no. you can, you can split it. You can do it on the same day. It all depends. Now let's say I'm doing like military press. It's obviously working my shoulders, my primary mover, but it's also working my triceps. Does that, should I, so I, let's say I did shoulders one day. I did shoulders on Monday. On Tuesday, can I go in and blast my triceps or should I incorporate that on my shoulder day? It really depends. You can do both. If you are trying to get more arm growth, mm -hmm. uh, I would say double up the volume. So like I would actually do chest and buys and then like back and tries on different days. So then you get double the volume. Yep. Um, but I would say maybe save that for when you're more moderate or advanced and you can handle and recover from the training volume. Mm -hmm. How about, how, how about chest? So if I'm hitting if, if, how basically like how much volume is going to be too much? Cause, because a lot of times you'll see people ramp up their volume or that muscle group, they ramp up their arms or their chest while they're getting ready to go to the beach. So if like Monday I'm lifting chest and buys Tuesday, shoulders and tries and then i hit and then wednesday i say well i'm going to go back and blast all of my arms and chest is that would, if i'm doing that consistently for a while is is that too much too much volume with not enough recovery i would say you're probably pushing it okay now what i would, if, I would say structure your workout so each week you're adding about five to ten percent of volume Okay. And then how much time should I take off before if I'm going to, you know, if it's my major focus, so I'm going to have an arm day. I mean, let's say all I want to do are arms or it really does for any muscle group. But if I all I want to do are arms, how many hours do I need between when I'm just focusing on that muscle group, when that muscle group is my primary exercise? Uh, 48 to 72 is probably a good rough time frame. Now, what about when I'm doing let's say I do back just a back day. So I'm obviously getting a lot of by movement in how much time would you put between doing back and then a primary arm day? Mm, 24 hours. Just 24. Yeah. You're probably okay. okay. And how many hours should you put in between the leg days that I'm not doing that? I say I am. Um, how many hours are in a year? Yeah, exactly. That's just don't do legs. You don't need them. Just, uh, no, I mean, legs is pretty similar, right? Yeah. Generally, you get more soreness from legs because there's a lot more eccentric load mm -hmm. than there are in other exercises, but um, pretty similar recovery patterns. Okay. Have you been fueling your muscles lately, Brad? I've been trying my best. What is your biggest problem with properly fueling your muscles? Time to eat food. Time to eat. Yeah, I had to have a. I I, I don't even like cut my own lettuce because when I'm lazy, live. Do you know what I had to do for lunch today? What I had to order lunch. It was terrible. It was so oh, sad about it. you know why? Because I ran out of my prepped meals. Yeah, well, that's what I was getting at. I didn't. I had. Uh, I didn't even have time to wash lettuce, so I used my prepackaged, already washed lettuce with chicken with uh, chicken nuggets. Cut not McDonald's chicken nuggets, just chicken nuggets that I made. Uh, cut up into it with ranch dressing for lunch because I didn't have anything. So I think I'm going to have to, what? Do you know what I think you should do? Grow up? No. I think you should order in prepped meals. I look. I have the website up in my other tab right now. I right think there. you should go to our meal prep partner, Mother of Macros. You can go visit them at motherofmacros.com. I would love to see them get mom.com. That would be awesome. I, I'm um, gonna, that's an expensive domain. Yes. But motherofmacros.com, save 10% on your order. Yeah. And you check out by using the code, all caps, because we like the yellow around here, macros10. Macros10. Now, I can tell you, the meals are delicious. Portion sizes are solid. The donuts that come with it, awesome. Um, 
shipping 24 hours takes three minutes per meal to heat it up and pretty minimal waste packaging. So they're very eco-friendly, mostly gluten-free bomb.com go to macros inc or go to mother of macros.com code macros 10. Did you say bob.com bomb.com PhD quotes thing people with PhDs say. We also say bomb diggity. Uh, Julie said, I've had to get an IV in the air because of dehydration. I hadn't been showing any signs of being sick and I hadn't been exerting myself in any way. The only thing they could figure out was that I was fighting some, some, some kind of stomach bud. Worst stomach cramps ever. I swear that I uh, I swear that I will start getting stomach cramps if I get even closer to getting dehydrated. That was almost 20 years ago. Yeah, I, cramps are a, bi- a big one in my opinion. Do you know why most people who have like dysentery die? Because they're dehydrated. Because they're dehydrated. Yeah, that's that is generally the biggest risk from like GI issues, like salmonella stuff like that, or E. coli. Is people generally? I mean, a lot of times people will die from septic shock stuff yep. like that, but dehydration is a major problem. Yep. Huge. My hair and beard are on point. Thank you. Uh, there's no option to order just the cheat donuts. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to solve that problem. I'm going to call my good friend Alyssa and be like, look, I know this isn't an option, but I got macros ink people beating down my door yeah. with the one comment on our Facebook live, but we need to solve this problem. Because I don't like having problems. Somebody's asking if the code is macros10. Yep, it's scrolling on the bottom of the screen right now, actually. I also heard if when you go to checkout, if you do a little jig before you click the checkout button, you get extra discounts. I don't think that's true. We'll have to do a a study and collect some data. Love how your dog walked through. We both had dogs today. Oh, yeah, they just just come in and out. Yeah. So let's get to our last topic today. And this is the important one. Silence, music or silence during a workout. So feel free to voice your opinions on this one in our comments right now. But I will tell you, I like silence during a workout. What do you like, Brad? Silence during a workout. Okay. <laughs> um, I I vary. Like most of the time, I <clears throat> most of the time when I remember my headphones when I go to the gym, I put them in and don't turn anything on. Um, sometimes I listen to like music scores, like Hans Zimmer music scores. And sometimes I listen to like raging emo music. It just really depends on what's going on. Um, I'm, yes, I'm if, a man of many moods. If I listen to music, I get so distracted with trying to find music that I want to listen to. That's um, also true. Yeah, and I get, I get sick of music real fast. Like I'll listen to the same uh, or something, same, the same album for <coughs> But as soon, but like once I'm not listening to that specific album, then I have to pick songs and jump, and it takes too long. And then I I tried listening to audiobooks for a little while, did not work. Um, got too distracted, so I I, I will put my headphones on and just have silence. And so- you know what's if you look at like the behavior of music consumption among people over the last sixty years, it is the most fascinating thing. Like it used to be. You would buy, like, you'd listen to the radio and you just listen to it all the time and you'd have to hear whatever they were playing. Yeah. And then you could buy your own vinyl records, but you couldn't, like, skip to songs. So you'd kind of have to listen to the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, you could, like, move it and try to guess where it's going to be. But, I mean, and then, you know, then you had tape decks where you could, like, fast forward. Mm-hmm. And then you had CDs where you could skip. And then you had MP3 players where you could, like, pick your own music and, like, make your own mashups. Yeah. Um, and then we, like, digressed right where it's like now it's just pandora it's like whatever the heck they feel like putting on there yeah we got we got like two we took the randomness out of it and put too much choice into it and people didn't like that yeah and then when was the last time you paid for music like Um, i actually so i have an apple music subscription so i get all those for free for like 14.99 i get every song but when an artist that i like comes out with an album i do i have stolen a lot of music in my lifetime um i made a i made a promise to myself that when i could afford to pay for music without questioning it i always would so whenever i find an album that i really like i always do pay for it yeah yep i'm that weird person that goes through and does that like i I still i mean i can listen to an album i listen to the song all day for free i'm paying for it legally but i will go back (laughs) yeah you know I like this guy. I'll download it. I'll pay him. I'll pay the nine ninety nine for the album. 
I also find it very funny that we as human beings are just the most like unforgiving, unserviceable creatures where it's like, Hey, we've done all this technology that you don't have to pay for. You get free music straight from an artist to your phone, wherever you want for no fee. And all you have to do is listen to my ad. And we say like, no, skip this ad. But I also don't want to pay a dollar to listen to ad free music. Right. When it's like it used to cost you 20 bucks for a CD that you could like only listen to in your house because Walkmans are too expensive. Yep. It's like we have the most bizarre consumer behavior. It's crazy. Yeah. All right. We got a lot of comments here. Whoa. That's my rant for the day. I, I liked it. Thank you, Dr. Brad, for taking care of the donuts. Music. Oh, I'm going to send an email. Workout equal music, run equal silence. So That's when I do cardio, I do have to have audio. Oh, so you're the opposite, sees. Yeah. Music. Music if running, no music if I count reps so I don't lose track. Music. I put my headphones in and I get into my zone and people stay away. In the zone, auto and zone. Depends. Silence if I'm lifting. Music or background noise of some sort if I'm walking or running. <sighs> SoundCloud is great. I know the owner, I know one of the creators of SoundCloud. Uh, music keeps me pumped, so I lift more. People work out in absolute silence. Yeah, I, I need. I, I like to work out. I like to work in silence. I just like silence. It's so much better. I used to be able to do stuff with music, and now when I get into my office, I put my headphones in every day, and there's nothing in it. I just like their earplugs. Yeah, no, I, I, I used to like like to work with bad once in a blue moon I'll go through a little phase, especially if like a new album comes out that I want to listen to where I can work out in the background. But once I get sick of the album, then I, I just I just scroll through music and it becomes distracting. And yeah, I prefer absolute silence when working. Like any background, if if I don't have music on, I need absolute silence. I hear you, fam. Yeah, no, I I have head I like my noise canceling headphones. Like I wear those when I work a lot of times just to do you have the in ear or over ear? Uh, both. I prefer the over ear though. I don't like the. I I kept getting. <laughs> I called it CEO ear. I kept getting. Uh, and I never had an ear infection before. And then last year I kept getting them in my right ear, and I couldn't figure out why. And Lisa looked at me and she goes, "Well, that's because you always have your stupid ass one earbud in hanging down to talk on the mic." And we sure enough, like it. She's like, "Stop doing that. Stop being stupid." And as soon as I stopped it, they. I, I haven't gotten one since, but I have not used. Uh, earbuds to talk on a phone like I was before. Everything's on speaker, as you know, or I hold. I actually hold the phone up. Here's a question for you. I'm gonna. I, I'm going to expose you, Jay, live on air. Here, Leanne said, "Oh, Leanne's watching on YouTube. Hold on." She said, Podca "Podcast during lifting. Oh, that would be too distracting." Oh uh, yeah, uh, people. If you don't know, we are on YouTube. We are on the tubes. We have two people watching on YouTube. Hi, two people watching on YouTube. Go to YouTube and search Macros Inc. Did you ever change our YouTube handle? No, not yet. Ugh. I think you have to have a certain number of followers, and I don't think we're there. So everybody go and subscribe. If we get 100,000 subscribers in YouTube by the end of the summer, I will make the most absurd, ridiculous video you've ever seen. If we get 100,000 subscribers to YouTube, we'll donate $10,000 to charity. I, I'm, I'm in. Yeah, we, and, and we'll we'll donate to like the Alzheimer's Foundation. That's my favorite charity. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, hundred thousand subscribers by the end of the year. We're going to donate on YouTube. We're going to donate uh, ten thousand dollars to the Alzheimer's Research Foundation. That will be our campaign. Okay. While everybody's campaigning for Miss for president, we'll be campaigning for donating. Yeah. Brad, what were uh, you? I'm sorry. At this point in your macro zinc career. What percentage of your day do you spend on the phone and answering people's emails versus like making work products? Um, versus making work products with emails. Okay. I'm glad you put emails in there. Um, it's getting better. It was, it was way where it, it, it shifts, right? It, it varies based on what we're doing. Um, in up until the beginning of this month, it was zero working on work products really and all just answering emails and phone. Um, now I'm probably back to 20% of my day where making work products in the evening. I really is what, you know, that's when I text you, but like, Brad, I've had four glasses of scotch. What do you think of this idea? <laughs> it's so funny. Cause like, I didn't realize early in my career, I mean, like why people sometimes couldn't get projects like far along pretty quickly. And people was like, Oh God, I have so many meetings today. I'm like, I don't get it. Like, what are you doing? 
Yeah. Uh, me, me and and now it's at the point where like, I don't get any real work done until like after dinner. Mm -hmm. when, like nobody else is bugging me and I can like have like four hours of just zone time. Yeah. Like every, everything in the morning, in the morning, that's why one of the reasons I started getting up early from like five to seven mm -hmm. is, is sometimes I might, it's sometimes I might reply to emails, but most of the time that is just time to be productive <laughs> to, to, to write my ideas down, to write thoughts down, to clarify thoughts I had. And then from there on it's reactive mode, reactive, reactive. And then until the evening when it's finally, I can be proactive and, and get things done. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm trying to fix that with an executive assistant. So if you want to be our executive assistant, uh, you can um, apply and then you could, get us on track so may ask for a youtube channel i just posted it into the private chat if you'd like to copy and paste oh it. thank you sir you're a scholar and a gentleman so I here's one of those two i don't know how to get this on to be oh where is it where am i going i'll post this here it won't let me post on youtube though and it won't let me post in the group if they're on youtube they found the youtubes yeah you can just go to youtube.com slash for macros i don't think you'll be able to type that in so i don't know why i'm putting it on the screen you could copy and paste it. Uh, not off the screen. I, this chat box won't show up in the Facebook group, only in the Facebook page. Really? That's weird. Yeah. Uh, Chris, Christy, listen, always metal. Oh, oh, music always metals or 90s dance specifically for cardio. Uh, yeah. Did, did you know some people don't have an internal voice? No, that would be complete silence. It'd just be colorful. I think they think in pictures is what actually happens. Here's the real question. What language or form of thinking do people engage in before they know a language? Uh, visual, it's all visual. But like, how do you, I'm convinced that part of understanding abstract ideas is an internal monologue. And I don't know if you can have an internal monologue without having like structured sentences and thought. Um, but I mean, but people like grown adults who, who have no, you know, they're not deaf, they're not blind, have, don't have internal monologues. I mean, that's been, we had that discussion not long ago. I think, I think they do. I think they have, they don't, there's, there's like, I think it's like 10% of the population does not have an internal monologue when they think. Here, we'll, we'll ask a group. We have some viewers. Does anybody in here think without having an internal monologue? Like, like me talking right now, I can finish this sentence and just, if I just stop talking, I still hear it in my head. Uh, but some people do not. There's a big, big article on that. Haven't you read? Didn't we? Were you not in that group discussion we had among the coaches? I probably was. Uh, we did a big, it was in Slack. We did a big, uh, a big, a big discussion and everybody said that they had it. I sent you a thing and I said, I, cause I can't think. Uh, <laughs> Here's a question. I, I don't think visually at all unless I am unless I have uh, headphones on and completely cut off all their sounds, then I can think visually. What about this? Because your comment about not having an internal monologue is inconsistent with my view of the brain, which means it must be wrong. <laughs> but what if the people who don't have an internal monologue have an internal monologue? but they are not privy to it. Like there's some, some discrepancy between their consciousness being aware of their subconscious. Yeah, we, I, I agree. And I, and I, and I thought that too. And there was a, there, were, there was a post in our group because I made it a post because it was interesting to me when I was reading this and a couple people posted, no, I don't have, like, I, I see things visually like, like when, when so when I do math, if I'm doing uh, like, if I'm doing, um, any any math that I can any math I can do in my head, but that's not automated math that I have to think of. I visually I do see the numbers. I don't think it in my head. I just see the numbers. They rotate and they move and they shift in my head. They always shift like one of those clocks with the falling numbers. Yep, and that's how like I, I add like numbers that I have to that I have to think quickly about to. to do math. And so here's. Here's the piece of evidence I offer that the people who say they don't have internal monologues do, but are just not consciously aware of them is the split brain research, mm -hmm. right? Where there will be full articulated thoughts by one side of the brain mm -hmm. that the other side of the brain will not be aware of. Yeah. Which means you can have this internal monologue, but the part of your brain that's processing your conscious experience is not witnessing that. So it may be that it's there, in those people, but is just not being heard. 
You need to do some hallucinogenics, and then you'll understand what it's like to not have an internal monologue. Can you talking. imagine um, what just complete chaos would come out of my brain? Um, it depends on what hallucinogenic you took, but I would definitely say it would be interesting. I would have to be in a very safe space in a very padded room. Is Brad gone finally? Where did Brad go? Brad, Brad Morgan? Brad Morgan's still around. He's just in the Facebook group. Maybe she's saying that she wants me to leave. Yeah, we can get rid of him. I mean, there. Oh, no, that's the wrong button. That got rid of me. There. Now he's gone. No more no more evil Dr. Dieter. We got rid of, we got rid of Dr. Evil. Sailor Soap. Hey, that means we have three people on YouTube. Four. Four oh people. Oh, my God. Um, um, yeah, so, no, I think the internal monologue one, it, it, one is interesting, but it definitely – um, Joe Rogan has an episode on internal monologue and his completely shuts off when he does hallucinogenics. And I will completely agree with, with that. It must've been nice to volunteer for a research study where they gave you that. Yes. Yes. That's what I did. It was a research study. It was a government funded research study. Cause they do that. Dude. Did you ever watch the show fringe? No. Oh, you need to watch it. Um, but you can. Did you know that the government, the U.S. government, has funded more studies on hallucinogenics than any organization in the world? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Brad bullied me in high school. I don't. I think we're getting trolled now. Oh, let's go. Look. We probably are. Yeah. So we will just ignore that one. Um, so, Brad. Yes. If somebody there's a child playing a recorder in the background. That yeah. is awesome. Yeah. All, all the tax dollars we spend on fantastic fungi is worth worth a watch. What's fantastic fungi? Sounds like it's awesome fungus. Fungus among us. Yeah. Is that, I mean, I'm sure we could just find somebody. I could find one of my neighbors to show us their feet. Is that what it is? Yes. So I think fantastic fungi is about how awesome mushrooms are and some of their benefits are the uh, psilocybin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what it is. I, I think the guy was from that was on the Rogan show. Yeah, I believe so too. Now I know exactly what you're talking about. The other one is uh, the other one that I, I know this one. the other one I like is uh, uh, there's a new one that I haven't watched yet on Netflix that's on hallucinogenics that they have all these celebrities talking about their trips and stuff, and I want to watch that one. But yeah, Joe Rogan has some has some really good ones. Um, some really good some really good people on there talking about like. Uh, on what it is the the bigger ones i think that are interesting on his show are when he goes back and talks about like it's used in ancient cultures and like what and what what it means in like their paintings and artworks and stuff i know that was that's kind of neat so brad jay last question for you you have a question yes what is it if you would like some coaching help mm -hmm. where would you go that's what I was going to ask you, actually. I personally head on over to macrosync.net. Um, they won't help you with the hallucinogenics that we're talking about, but they would definitely help you with nutrition um, and how to get that on. They they could be your inner monologue. They could. They can be your inner monologue. Yeah, we could be your inner monologue for you. But in all in all seriousness, if you if you are are having trouble navigating flexible dieting, you're 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 new to it. You're you're just not getting results with what you want. Go to macrosync.net. There's a two-week free trial. Sign up. Just talk to a coach. You, you come on in. You'll do a consult with them for, for a half hour, an hour, and, and you can really just see what's going on and, and see where, where some of your problems are and what we can help you with. And then one last thing before we go. Okay. Um, part of our daily show and our podcast that will go live as soon as I get some assets back from somebody we're waiting for um, is that we are working with other corporate partners or business partners um, to help kind of give small business awareness. And so we do offer sponsorship places on our show. Um, so we offer them here in our MI Live show that will be on our podcast. Um, we also kind of help spread the word in our email. So, for example, Mother Macros is one of our partners. Um, we've kind of helped them build out some of their relationships with us and it's been a, a great experience for for them and for us and for our clients and so if you guys have a small business that you would like us to kind of help promote um and have a sponsorship on the show reach out and let us know yeah i i, I concur 
So, with that being said, Jay. I think we're done. Tomorrow? Oh, we're same back. Macro time. Same macro channel. Same macro channel. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I think we will close up shop, and I will get back to work. All right. I will talk to you later. See you guys tomorrow. Thanks for coming.